Today, we're going to show you how to use your own router with Fios. This is the ultimate guide that will help you understand everything you need to know. We will go over all the steps in detail and explain each step so you know exactly what you're doing and why. By the end of this video, you will be able to decide if it is worth it for you to use your own router with Fios or if you should just stick with Verizon's router. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more tutorials like this one. Today, we're going to be talking about the best way to use your own router with Fios. And to make it simple, you can buy any router that you want and use it with Fios. But there are many things that you need to know before you take the plunge. So let's talk about those. First thing you need to know is whether you have a G110 or a G140 router. You can look at the sticker on the bottom of your router to find out which one you have. If it says G110, you're good to go and you can follow these steps to set up your own router with Fios. But if you have a G140 router, then you cannot do this. The G140 is what's called a coax bridge device and it works only with Verizon's routers. So if you have a G140, you cannot use your own router with Fios no matter what you do. So, once you verify that you have a G110 router, next you need to decide if you want to keep your old router or buy a new one. Now, before we move on, I just want to point out that you can still use Verizon S router and still have your own router working at the same time. This can come in handy if you want to keep some of the features that only Verizon S router has, such as the built-in 5G modem. You can turn off the DHCP server on your new router and plug it into the back of Verizon S router and you're good to go. But remember that you will not be able to connect to the internet unless your new router is powered on. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's continue. Once you have your new router in hand, you need to figure out where you're going to put it. Ideally, you want to place it as close to your phone jack as possible. This is because the longer the Ethernet cable runs, the more signal loss you will experience. Now the good news is that Verizon uses Ethernet over Twisted Pair, also known as EUTP, so you shouldn't experience much signal loss even with long cable runs. But the best solution would be to plug the router directly into the phone jack if possible. Okay, now that you found the perfect location for your new router, let's start the configuration process. First thing you need to do is plug in the power cable and wait until it turns on. Then take the Ethernet cable from the ONT and plug it into the Internet or WAN port on your new router. Then take the other end of the Ethernet cable and plug it into the phone jack. Now before we move on. I just want to point out that you should never plug anything else into the internet or WAN port on your router except the cable from the aunt. Doing otherwise could cause serious damage to your router and void the warranty. Next, you need to configure your new router. And the first thing you need to do is log into the router's web interface. To do this, open up your favorite browser and type in the default gateway address. It is usually 192.168, 1.1 or 192.168, 0 0.1. If you can't find it, then refer to the documentation that came with your router. Once you're logged in, you will need to change the admin password for security reasons. So make sure you do that first. The next thing you need to do is set up a static IP address for your router. And to do that, go to Network or LAN Settings and select the Ethernet connection. Here you will need to enter a static IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. For most routers, the subnet mask will be 255.55, 255.0, and the default gateway will be 192.168, 1.54 .1 1 or 192.168. 0.54, if you can't find these settings, then again refer to the documentation that came with your router. The next thing you need to do is disable DHCP on your router. To do this, go to Network or LAN settings and find the DHCP server. It might be labeled differently depending on your router, make sure to turn it off. 
Otherwise, you will experience double NAT and your devices will not be able to connect to the Internet. The final step is to configure the DNS settings. Go to Network or LAN settings and find the DNS settings. Make sure to set it to manual and type in 8.8, 8.8 and 8.8, 4.4. These are Google's public DNS servers. You can use these or you can use Verizon's DNS servers which are 208.67, 222.222 and 208.67, 220.220 and that's pretty much it. Your router should now be configured correctly and your devices should be able to connect to the internet. If they're not, then double check all your settings and make sure everything is correct. If you're wondering if you can use a Wi-Fi 6 router with Fios, then the answer is yes. But there are some caveats. First, you need to buy a router that supports 3x8x VDSL2 and has a VDSL to profile. Most newer routers will have this, but it is important to check because you do and want to buy a router that does and support it. Second, you will need to enable the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet mode on your router. This is because Fios can provide speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second and you will need a router that supports these speeds. To do this, go to the advanced settings of your router and find the Ethernet settings. There should be an option to enable 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Make sure to enable this, otherwise you will experience a speed reduction. Finally, you will need to make sure that your devices are compatible with Wi-Fi 6. Otherwise, you will not be able to take advantage of the faster speeds. If you're not sure whether your devices are compatible or not, then you can check online. If you're wondering if you can use a mesh router with Fios, then the answer is yes. But again, there are some caveats. First, you will need to make sure that both routers support 3x8x VDSL2 and has a VDSL to profile. Most mesh systems will have this, but it is important to check because you do and want to buy a system that does and support it. Second, you will need to enable the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet mode on both routers. This is because Fios can provide speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second and you will need routers that support these speeds. To do this, go to the advanced settings of your routers and find the Ethernet settings. There should be an option to enable 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Make sure to enable this on both routers, otherwise you will experience a speed reduction. Finally, you will need to make sure that your devices are compatible with Wi-Fi 6. Otherwise, you will not be able to take advantage of the faster speeds. If you're wondering if you can use a fiber to the home or FTTH aunt with Fios, then the answer is yes. But again, there are some caveats. You will need to make sure that the aunt supports 3x8x VDSL2 and has a VDSL to profile. Most ONTs will have this, but it is important to check because you do and want to buy an ONT that does and support it. You will also need to make sure that the ONT has an Ethernet port that supports 2.5 gigabit speeds. Most newer ONTs will have this, but again, it is important to check because you do and want to buy an ONT that does and support it. Finally, you will need to make sure that your devices are compatible with Wi-Fi 6. Otherwise, you will not be able to take advantage of the faster speeds. We hope that this video was helpful and that it answered some of your questions. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.